Viva Cristo Rey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, the last couple of days, Bishop Barron has made um, a lot of waves on his Twitter account and his blog. And um, sad. It is really sad. Um, our bishops just don't get it. They just don't get it. They don't understand. The laity, it's not the job of the laity to lead. Now, I hijacked the uh, Complicit Clergy's website here because I like how they did this banner here for Bishop Barron because that's what he says. That's what he claims to be um, his job. It's not his job. Now, here's a couple of tweets he started Bishop Barron started deleting his tweets uh, especially these right here there was four tweets that he did a four part tweet I should say and the two of four was unavailable I could try to view it but then you get down here failed to load tweet and then within about an hour after I took these screenshots they were non-existent. They were removed altogether. But Bishop Barron is a microcosm of the problem that is worldwide. It's sad but true. It just, as a layman, as someone that is wants to know the faith, wants to live the faith, wants to teach the faith to his children. And we have bishops, and I have met priests and bishops that are just, they're, they're hell-bent on destruction of the church. They really are. Now, I have also met some wonderful priests, and a few, uh, you mean few bishop, good bishops. But, don't, you don't, no one has to take my word for it. I can tell you with certainty that Bishop Barron is wrong, and I'm going to show you. And from our own, uh, from the, our Lord's own mouth, how it is the bishop's responsibility. So, the best thing to do. is to head over to um, Fatima.Mashadu-Family.com and there I posted the um, the three volume set the books on Ferrer Michelle on Fatima. Now there's three options but only two are available. The paperback I've been trying to get the paperback republished but without getting some sort of confirmation that Ferrer Michelle has passed away, um, I can't get it done. So I have converted it to HTML so you can read it online and you can also click on the EPUB, the EPUB, and you can download it from Internet Archive and then you can put it right into your Google Books or into your iBooks or whatever device you use for reading books. But if you want to read it online, you just click on the read online HTML but we're going down here to the volume 3 and this is going to be real short and to the point but this is the bishops this is what our Lord sees what is what he wants go to chapter 1 the message to the bishops of Spain the true reform that heaven requests and we're going to try to make this a little bit bigger And let me just read this to you. And if any bishops are out there, that I doubt they will ever watch this video, but just so that at least the laymen that do watch it understand their true duty when it comes to this. 
uh, if Bishop Barron happens to read this, please follow it. But the message of Fatima, uh, Sister Lucia, uh, in June of 1941, and he, she was writing um, to his, the Bishop of Spain, or actually she conveyed this to the Bishop of Spain, uh, to one of the bishops of Spain. But I'll just read it to you so you understand. So the revelation of June 12th, 1941. Once again, this divine communication took place on a Thursday evening during the holy hour, which Lucy made faithfully each week in conformity with the Sacred Heart's request at Pere Le Mignon. But this was no ordinary Thursday. It was Corpus Christi. And in addition, that evening, Sister Lucy was undoubtedly united in spirit with the pilgrims at the Cova de Iria, who were going to spend the night in prayer to begin the ceremonies of June 13. Here is the most complete account of this divine communication, addressed by the seer to Archbishop Garcia y Garcia at Valladolid. He was the former Bishop of Tui, who for this reason had become one of her spiritual advisors. To satisfy the desires of our good Lord and Your Excellency with the greatest clarity possible for me, I explain what the good Lord deemed to communicate to me so that I could pass it on to you. With the permission of my superiors, I have the custom of remaining in prayer in the chapel until midnight from Thursday to Friday. In these hours of very great recollection, the good Lord has the habit of communicating himself so intensely to my poor soul that I do not doubt his presence in any way. Ordinarily, after having confounded me in my own nothingness and my own misery by making me feel what there is in me that displeases him, he continues by lamenting other things which, in the poor world, cause him such pain. On June 12, 1941, he complained especially about the, lo about the coldness and laxity of the clergy of Spain, both secular and regular, and the indifference of the sinful life of the Christian people. In 1941, the sinful life of the Christian people. God help us. The remedy. And he continued thus. If the bishops of Spain gathered each year in a house specially chosen to make their retreat, and if, with a common accord, they decided on the course to follow in leading the souls confided to them, they would receive enlightenment and special graces from the Divine Spirit. Make it known to the Archbishop of uh, Valladolid that I ardently desire the bishops to meet in a retreat to arrange among themselves and determine with a common accord the means to be employed for the reform of the Christian people and to remedy the laxity of the clergy and a great part of the religious. The number of those who serve me in practice of sacrifice is very limited and I have need of souls and of priests who serve me by sacrificing themselves for me and for souls. The good Lord will make known to your excellency the reality of his desires and he promises to bless the efforts you will deem to make to satisfy them. From our own Lord's lips to Bishop Barron, the onus is without a doubt on you. It starts with you. If without the leadership of the clergy, the layman can do nothing. In fact, it reminded me of a passage in Scripture in the book of Acts. And now, chapter 19, verse 13. Now some also of the Jewish exorcists who went about attempted to invoke over them that they, that had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, I conjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were certain men, sons of Sceva, a Jew, a chief priest, that did this. But the wicked spirit answering said to them, Jesus, I know, 
and Paul I know, but who are you? Bishop Aaron, if we as the clergy, or as the claimants, were to go out on our own without the full backing of the bishops, of our bishops, and we were to confront evil, they would say the same thing to us. Who are we? We have not been charged with power over the evil ones. It is a truly sad state of affairs in the church. But, and I don't know, things are getting really bad. And clearly, uh, always look as darkest before the sun comes out. But the next couple of years are going to be very, very difficult. Without the bishops, we're lost sheep. Anyway, this is my two cents. I highly encourage everyone and anyone that <clears throat> uh, has not read this book or these three volumes, The Whole Truth About Fatima by Ferrer Michelle. Uh, if you ever watched any of the videos from uh, uh, John Venari or Father Gruner, they reference these books all the time. And they're a wealth of knowledge. And myself, being Portuguese, I even learned a lot about Portugal, the land of Mary, and um, great books, great reading. They're free. Um, I know a lot of people like the paperbacks. I try to, but I, right now I can't get it done. They're, I have to have permission for them to be able to publish the books. So, anyway, that's all I have. Um, May God bless you and keep the faith. Bye.